Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Liz and on this channel, I do exactly as it's called, I talk all about history. But before we get into the video, I just wanna say, I hope you all keeping okay. I hope you all well during this heat wave here in the UK. We are not used to these staggering temperatures, especially on Monday when it reached 39. It was very, 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 very warm. And I'm not, the best person in the heat. I'm red-headed, fair-skinned. Fair I burn very, very easily. But I just want to say, I hope you're all keeping okay. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all hydrated and keeping yourself safe in the heat. Uh, anyway, let's get back to today's video, which is all about King Howard I, also known as Howard Hereford. <laughs> Howard I or Howard Hereford was born around 1015. He was the middle son born to Canute the Great who was King of England, Denmark, Norway and some parts of Sweden. Howard's mother was Alfgifu of Northampton who was either Canute's first wife or mistress. There's a little bit of speculation about that. When King Canute died on the trials of November in 1035, he left both England and Denmark to his youngest son, Hartha Canute, whose mother was Emma of Normandy, Canute's second wife. Hartha Canute, not being able to travel to England to receive his coronation, was trapped in Denmark, where Denmark was under the threat of invasion by King Marcus I of Norway. Hartha Canute was trying to defend his royal claims in Scandinavia. So back in England, Hartha Canute's mother, Emma of Normandy, where she may have been acting as regent on his behalf, but she was certainly protecting his interest and she had the royal, royal treasury in her possession. Emma was settled in Winchester with Hartha Canute soldiers from the royal household. Howard's mother, Alfgifu of Northampton, was also busy trying to secure her son's position, where she believed that Howard was the rightful heir to England and not Hartha Canute. And she appeared to have held some degree of political influence among the northern barons. There was evidence that Alfgifu was attempting to secure Howard's position through bribing those nobles. The north was now turning on Howard's side, mainly through a deal with Godwin, Earl of Wessex, who had faithfully served King Canute and Emma of Normandy had now switched sides. The nobles had agreed to have Howard Harefoot crowned King of England. However, much to Howard and his mother's dismay, the Archbishop of Canterbury had refused to crown him. Instead, he offered to perform the ceremony but without the scepter and the crown. Instead, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Ethelnoth, had placed the regalia on the altar of the church and had firmly refused to have it removed. Howard had responded by denouncing the Christian religion entirely, and it was said that he had refused to attend church until he was crowned. Emma of Normandy was gaining more support and she had managed to retain the power in Wessex. Emma was fighting hard to access the power of the throne for her son and heir, Hartha Canute. In 1036, on hearing of the death of King Canute, 
Emma's sons by Ethered, who was Ethered the Unready, Edward and Alfred had returned from exile in Normandy. And once they arrived in England, they found that they didn't have as much support as they thought, as many still resented their father's reign. They found that Harold was much more in favour and with their mother alone in Wessex, their younger half-brother Harthur Knut still trapped in Denmark, it all proved just too ideal for Harold as he was securing his kingship and he was willing to go to any lengths possible to hold on to that power. In the encomium of Queen Emma, it was said that Harold had sent um, forged letters from Emma to her sons, Edward and Alfred, asking them to visit her. The brothers made their way to visit their mother. Alfred found himself face to face with the man who had switched his loyalties, Godwin. Godwin was said to have faked his loyalty to the young Prince Alfred, pledging to find him lodgings and offered to accompany him on his journey. The men carried on with their journey with Alfred completely oblivious to Godwin's deceit. Godwin had seized Alfred's men and he bound them all together, killing almost all of them. Alfred was left alive. He was tied to his horse and he was taken to a boat where he was taken to the monastery in Ely in Cambridgeshire, where he was brutally blinded by hot pokers, where he later died from his injuries. Edward had narrowly escaped the same fate and he fled back to Normandy. The cruel death of Alfred had shown the brutal tactics that Howard was willing to go to to ensure that he held the power. Despite the initial opposition of the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1037, Howard Harefoot, whose name was given to him for his speed and his um, hunting skills, was now accepted as King of England. Emma of Normandy took refuge after Harold took possession of the treasury where she found she fled to Flanders where she found hospitality and protection for as long as she needed asylum. Even though Harold was now king of England, some historians have suggested that it was in fact his mother Alfgifu who was the real ruler ruler, not, or not ruler, ruler of England. There's very little known about Howard's rule. It appears that he was not challenged during his reign. He may have reached an agreement with Harthur Canute that he would govern England as regent until his return, although there is nothing that backs this up. Howard's reign was short-lived. He didn't live long enough to see Hartha Canute's invasion. Just a few weeks before Hartha Canute made his planned raid on the English coastline, Howard I died from a mysterious illness in Oxford on the 17th of March in 1040. He was aged around 25 years old. He was buried at Westminster However, this would not be his final resting place. Hartha Canute seeked revenge for his half-brother's murder. So when he arrived in England, Hartha Canute had Harold Harefoot's body exhumed, beheaded and thrown into the River Thames as punishment. Howell's body would later be pulled out of the water and later rest in a church 
named St. Clement Danes. Harold, who had one son named Alfwyn, whose mother is unknown. Alfwyn became a monk and an abbot on the um, continent and didn't contest to the throne. Harold's mother, Alfgifu of Northampton, disappeared with no trace. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, Harold Harefoot ruled England for four years and 16 weeks, which meant he would have begun ruling two weeks after King Canute's death. There's so little known about Harold Harefoot's reign that an assessment of his legacy is problematic. What can be said that if he had succeeded in establishing a lineage of, of the crown might not have passed as it did to Emma's great nephew, William, of Nor William the Conqueror. Ending the Anglo-Saxon period in English history. The Norman ascendancy resulted in the development of a blended culture, mixing old Anglo-Saxon with the French. History was in favour of the Norman cause and not the Anglo-Saxon. Edward the Confessor would be the last Anglo-Saxon king. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. What do you think? What do you think of Howard? Do you think that he would, if if Arthur Canute hadn't come back to England, do you think he would have walked? What's your thoughts on Howard? Let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for joining me. Look after yourselves. I'll see you all soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe as I upload every single week. And I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.